just came back from giving a talk to my old high school and I asked the students whether they thought that they were bad at maths and basically everyone put up their hand. I mean I expected a fair few number of hands but not that many which really sucks because I used to think of myself as bad at maths when I was in high school and that really held me back for ages as well but now I have a PhD in maths. I've told this story before on YouTube and one of the questions I get asked the most is, well, did you go back? Did you go and tell those teachers who told you you weren't good at maths that, you know, whatever became of you? Um, well, the answer was always no. I didn't feel the need to because I didn't want to rub it in anyone's face. I know that teaching maths is not an easy thing and I don't blame those teachers for you know, not believing in me because I, I really wasn't doing well in maths back in those days. And so it's like, I don't know, I guess understandable that they didn't think anything would come of me. But then one of the teachers who I really like at the school asked me to come back and give this talk. And I was wondering like, what could I tell these students that would be helpful to them? And I was also thinking, what could I tell these teachers that would be helpful to them? And uh, the thing I decided was, to talk about maths and maths ability and how I don't think that the way that students and teachers think about maths ability is very healthy and it doesn't lead to good outcomes for the students. But the thing is, when I went there, I realized that most of the teachers who had been a little bit discouraging had actually retired and the teachers who were still there were the ones who were super, super nice to me and had been really, really encouraging. And so uh, I decided that I would make this video in case you are a maths teacher or um, a student who's studying maths or a parent. And I hope that maybe some of this might be helpful to you. So I'll quickly recap my story. When I was in school, I thought of myself as a humanities kid. Like I really liked, I don't know, English and learning Japanese and uh, history and art and all of those kinds of things. And I didn't think of myself as like a science person um, until like I was in year 10 or so, which is like 16 years old. And I suddenly discovered physics and realized just like how magical it is. I was just amazed that like with physics, you could explain so much about the world. And so I had this like crazy about face where I went from thinking of myself as like a humanities student who is definitely going to do something creative and all of that um, to being a, a like science person. Like I was like, I'm going to be a scientist. But the problem was I was still really bad at maths. So the way that my school worked, and I think a lot of schools, in, at least in Australia, work, is that when you're 12 or 13 for us, you get a placement test that decides whether you are good at maths or you're not. And um, what was decided for me was that I was not. I was a pretty mediocre to bad maths student. And yet for physics, I would need to do a lot of maths. And so I decided that like, okay, I'm just gonna have to do it. I'm gonna have to take like the sort of high level maths classes um, for my final two years. And back in those days, people couldn't stop you if that's what you wanted to do. Uh, I learned going back to my school that actually now it's not possible to do high level maths without um, needing some sort of like marks requirements, which yeah, I'm glad didn't exist when I was there because I would not have passed. So anyway, when I was deciding that this is what I wanted to do, I asked my maths teacher, do you think that I'll be able to do it? And he thought I was joking and <laughs> laughed and walked away. He was a nice guy and I don't blame him for it, but he saw that, you know, I was struggling even with like the level of maths that I was doing and he just didn't believe that I would be able to pull through and do the harder stuff. And for a while it seemed like he was right. When I was doing the first year of that high level stuff, I was still kind of struggling and my teacher for that year told me I should probably just drop back down to the standard level. In my final year though, I got super lucky and I got this teacher who convinced me that maths is actually interesting and I worked really, really hard on maths um, with his help and I felt like I was finally understanding it and I was like, oh, maybe I'm a maths person after all. That was until I got my final results for high school maths and I got a five out of seven, which is a very decent mark, but felt like a total failure after I put in so much work. And so when I went to university, I felt discouraged again. And in university, you have the option of doing sort of like, um, the the like higher level maths track which is meant for people who want to become mathematicians and physicists and like the standard level which was for everyone else and of course I took the standard level because I didn't think that I was made out for it. 
the high level track like emphasized um, stuff in pure maths like uh, proofs, which I didn't see at all in the standard level. And then in the next year, they got to pick electives that were like um, analysis. And yeah, I didn't take that. But exactly halfway through my undergrad, um, I decided to take this course on like abstract algebra and it was just for fun. And I remember distinctly that one of my friends who had done pure mathematics was like, oh, abstract algebra, that's not like a real course. It's not as like hardcore as analysis, but yeah, I guess you could do that if you want. Um, I did and I loved it. It made me realize that maths is actually great. Like a lot of the things that I love about physics are the same things that I loved about maths. It's about understanding how the world works and like really understanding it, like getting down to the basics. Um, and also maths was just super creative, which I didn't expect at all. Like from school, I had kind of expected that maths was this thing where you just like learn how to do it and then you follow the rules and then you get to the right answer. But actual maths isn't like that. There's a whole lot of intuition that goes into actual maths. And that was actually very similar to in physics. And that was something I really loved about physics that you had to kind of try and understand it at a very intuitive level and like feel when an answer is right. But that said, I did not do well in that algebra class because remember at this point I was well and truly behind. Um, all these other people had been like introduced to the idea of what a proof is long, long ago. And I had no idea. I remember very distinctly that um, in one of my tutorials, they asked us to prove something for uh, all natural numbers. And I did like 10 examples on an Excel sheet and I printed it out and I gave it to my tutor and I was like, there you go, there's your proof. It worked for 10 numbers, like surely it's gonna keep working. And I just could not understand why that wasn't enough to prove something was true, which is crazy to think about now. So like, as you can imagine, I didn't do super, super well on that course. I did okay. Um, well, but I worked really, really hard because I had to try and learn this like mathematical mindset of being like more rigorous and uh, that didn't come naturally to me like at all. I think the creative side of it did come very naturally and I really loved that part and I took to it very easily. But the part where you had to very, very carefully justify every single thing you said um, using axioms and like very carefully deriving things from those axioms was foreign to me. It just didn't occur to me that you had to prove something was true and rather than just being like, yeah, it's obviously true. I feel it, I know it's true. And so, uh, yeah, after that semester, I was like, okay, I'm gonna be a mathematician after all this, but I'm gonna have to pull my socks up because I have not yet understood this like mathematical thinking. So what I did was I took Walter Rudin, which is this very classic textbook on analysis. And I read it cover to cover, and did all of the problems over my summer holidays. And it was brutal. <laughs> it was just like, so painful to deal with all of these little edge cases and think about, um, you know, being super, super careful, just, just like not at all the way that um, I used to function. But after that summer holidays, I feel like I changed a lot and I became much, much more rigorous. And I love that mathematics was this like great balance between this creative, intuitive side and this very rigorous side. I think that students in high school don't get to see mathematics like this. They only see the more rigorous, but also very formulaic part of maths where you're basically just following an algorithm and getting an answer. And it makes less and less sense that that is the part of maths that's emphasized in high school when there are, you know, great calculators and like online tools for doing basically any integral you can think of or any calculus problem that you can think of. And so it doesn't really make sense to make students extremely good at those things. What they should be emphasizing is the kind of mathematical thinking, like both the sort of rigorousness of it and also the more conceptual side. The other thing that I just wish teachers understood more and students is that math is just a skill like any other skill. You have to practice and you have to work really hard at it. And yes, some people are going to pick it up a lot more quickly and some parts of it are gonna come more naturally to other people. But that doesn't mean that anyone can't learn this. Like for me, I think that that sort of creative side came fairly naturally, but the rigorous side came like pulling teeth. I mean, it was hard. I put in a lot of work to get better at those specific things. And I, I still know that I'm not like as good at those bits as I could be. And that's fine. When I was doing maths research, I did put a lot of work in 
to try and make myself better on the rigorous side because my supervisor had told me that that was one of my weaknesses. And so I went and like would reprove things from papers and try and really do things step by step. Maths, just like anything else, is a skill that you have to practice and you have to learn. And yet the way that schools talk about maths is as if it's some innate skill. Like I cannot believe that at 12, I was given a test that decided whether I was good at maths or bad. And that because that test said that I was bad at maths, I was put into a class where I wasn't shown as many interesting mathematical ideas and the teachers kind of came in with the notion that we were never going to amount to anything. In fact, I remember very clearly um, how when we were learning the quadratic equation, uh, we had a substitute teacher who was usually a teacher who would teach one of the like proper maths classes and not our class. She was talking about the determinant under the square root and she was saying that if the determinant is positive then there's actually a solution and if it's negative then there's no solution. But actually that's not true, she said. Um, there's a complex solution in that case but you guys won't learn about complex numbers. I remember feeling so frustrated and angry about that. It just felt so unfair that you couldn't learn something and someone had decide that, decided that for you a long time ago. I want to make it clear that I had a lot of really great science and maths teachers and if it wasn't for them and their encouragement I definitely wouldn't have ended up here. Um, so yeah I've talked about some like bad teachers but they weren't the majority and in that way I was really lucky. So if you are talking to a student about maths whether that's your own student or your child or a friend's kid or whatever it is, um, I just urge you to like make sure you're not reinforcing the idea that you're either good at maths or you're not. Thanks. <laughs>